Hello and welcome to Weary Dads. I'm your host, PJ Weary, with my co-host. That's me, Dad, Peter Weary. I was thinking, how can we make the introduction different? And I just did. And today's episode is brought to you by the table that holds our microphones. And you got to understand, folks, the reason I'm mentioning this is this is a beautiful table. It's round, and I don't know why, but it's it, today when we got started the other podcast we were doing, I was like, PJ, where'd you get this table? And he goes, I don't know. I think, and folks, these, this group of people need more advertising because they, they just don't seem to be doing anything out there. It, this table is brought to you by Amazon Essentials, I think. <laughs> Does Amazon, I mean, need any, not only introduction, but any type of If, if you've heard of them, if you've heard of Amazon. <laughs> yeah. This is a great moment to throw this out there. Application for making decisions like we've talked in previous uh, podcasts. Why are we not on video? So that's not the topic for today, but I did want to explain to folks that it literally added probably at least 10 hours a week uh, to include video on the uh, on this podcast. And I was not spending enough time with the kids. I was looking for some place. We wanted to keep the podcast itself going, but um, it's significantly easier audio only. So apologies for no video, but that's why we're... I don't know where this, this came way. from, but I'm going to be honest with you folks. I think all that is bull dinky. I think PJ doesn't want me to be seen because <laughs> I'm getting old and decrepit. Hey, listen. Our editor was so bothered when uh, <laughs> some of the early shots, your, your knees were in the camera. <laughs> What's wrong with my knees? Other than this, <laughs> folks, let me just say this. Huge prayer request. I've got two teeth being pulled and I'm having knee surgery. I'm 60. I'm falling apart. <laughs> and that's what this podcast is about. Please pray for me. I'm falling apart. Now, this podcast today brought to you by this Amazon table is about roles in parenting. And we're going to talk transitioning about through yeah, different right. roles. We're yeah. Talk, Basically stages. Yeah. Really, that's a better term, stages. And I'm going to tell you why I thought of this and why we're doing it. I just have a friend, Paul Witt. You've heard me mention his name on um, podcast, and he just posted a picture of his son, uh, he and Jackson, who just got done doing a um, basketball camp. And Jackson's probably 20, 21, maybe. He's going to Lancaster Bible College, and he just finished doing the Bible college. Yeah, you just heard my son say, wow, because he remembers Jackson at seven and eight years old. The last time I saw Jackson, Jackson was probably like three and a half feet tall. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and so uh, it's awesome because Paul posted... As a parent, now I have the privilege of being my son's friend, and we do this together. And you know this, um, you and I did basketball camps, mm. and uh, you did a phenomenal job, but I always give you the younger group, which you consider torture, um, which I understand. <laughs> it wasn't, but was it torture, but it wasn't as fun as the older group. <laughs> no. But, you know, you did that until your college years, uh, probably in the middle of your college years. But when Paul posted this, I began to, to think on, and I've heard this before, this may be uh, something we're reiterating to you, but I think you need to reflect on it. There are roles, there are stages, I think is a yeah. better word you said, to parenting. And yeah. as the patriarch of the family, you and I came up with like three of them. And we, because I am- Well, I, a, I would say four, but they kind of, what yeah, that yeah. happens is they intermingle with each yeah. other, right? We're not, we're going to give you rough ages, but that's going to change like- yeah. With each kid. Right. That's really interesting with each kid because every kid is in, you know, matures in a different stage. Yes. Because the first stage, and the, the reason I, I say this, and this is like, as I was thinking through this, <laughs> like first stage is caretaker. And so from like zero to five for most kids, you're, you're just making sure that they live and that they have like the basics, right? Yeah. You're a provider <laughs> and you're protecting, but let's be honest, they I really, think yeah. five is kind of young. I would even go up to 10 to 12. <laughs> Unless you're talking about Finn, because Finn at the yeah. age of seven is, he still has his moments. Yeah. You've got to be, you know, a little bit firmer and so forth, but you could coach Finn a little bit. Well, and that's where, so the next one is coaching. And that's like for what happens, it's not like a hard and fast cutoff, but you, you kind of merge into, so you, you move from just like, oh, I'm just like taking care of all their needs. And like for Finn, I'm like, no, you can like a great, a simple example, but a great example is, uh, he has stopped asking me to get him water and he's like, 
He literally did it this morning. He's like, hey, dad, can I get, can you get me some, actually, I'll just go get it. I'll get, I right. need some water, right? And that's where I am coaching him on how to do things instead of just doing things for him or just making very basic survival decisions. And this is why, and I know no one's surprised on this podcast, caretaking might go a little bit longer for Soren. He's very good at doing things on his own. The problem, well, he's, he's very interested in doing things he on his own. He loves doing things on his own. He just ain't as good as you thought he'd be. I'm not going to lie. I still don't know exactly what happened. He went to go to the bathroom and uh, some matches have been left out to, uh, yeah, probably dad hadn't, hasn't heard this. So maybe this I is. I don't know if I want to hear this because we, as you I all know. I think he just blew out the candles. <laughs> And we might have had it toasted. We might have had it burned. And every little boy, that's another one. We're going to go there. Every kid's a pyro. Oh, I don't know yeah. where it is. But go ahead. So what did he do? So I came in and I was, he, he was supposed to be going to the bathroom. And it's very common for him to take longer than he should going to the bathroom. And that's almost always spells disaster of some kind. And I came in and there's a very sharp sulfur smell that comes with striking a match. And he had his hands behind his back. And I was like, what do you have in your hands? And he like opened them up and it was like a magic trick. There was nothing there. And I was like were you playing with matches? He's like, no. And I was like, I didn't see any matches anywhere, but I could smell it. I still don't know what happened, but I was like, all right, we're just going to wash our hands. You have gone to the bathroom, right? And we're going to come out. And I, <laughs> you didn't put like a light on him and interrogate him <laughs> and say, okay. <laughs> but it's, you know, uh, he, this is a good example of caretaker mode. Um, he knew how to wipe his butt and he's decided to stop. And so the other day, um, he did not wipe and he went to go wash his hands by going and sitting on the counter and he sat on his feet. I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> okay. We live here. All right. So he did be, clean it up. <laughs> he's going to be a caretaker till he's like 47. All right. But there yeah. is that, that phase, right? Yes. We talk about that. And then the next phase. Okay. And by the way, folks, we gather for the average child, the non soren <laughs> child that may be, you know, eight to 12, somewhere in there, like right. 12. And then you become, and we talked about this, you're kind of coaching. Yeah. And I put this together with it, and PJ may stretch this, but folks, I think you know, when you're in the coaching stage, you'll also learn to be a confidant, somebody that they can trust to say to things that honestly might not make sense. And kids may ask things that will scare you. Yeah. Like, where's their mind going with this? But that's where their mind is. Mm. And you better let them go there because they're going to try to find out somewhere if their mind has gone there. So, and it's important that you keep this confidential as a confidant, as a parent. Go. A lot of parents will say, oh, you can tell me anything. But the real test of that is, do you freak out when they tell you stuff? Because they're always going to have some kind of thought or some, they'll have done something and it's not about not giving them consequences, but it's about how you react when they, when they tell you. And it's really important, whether you agree with what they did or not, that you accept it. And that's how you become partly that confidant. And that'll become, uh, I definitely, the coaching and confidant go together. But I think as they get older, the confidant piece becomes more important because they'll know how to do more things. And the more right? you've coached them, the more confidence they'll have to be able to Confide. Right. And thus be a confident. And then I want to go back to here. Caretaker, not controller. Because if you're right. a controller, then when those questions come up, you have no control. Okay. And you're going to panic. You cannot control. You cannot control decisions that kids are going to make. You can be a caretaker and you can try. And I'm going to really careful. You can try to force and ramrod stuff. But if you have a child that is in any way independent, which I would declare is a great thing because an independent kid that is focused on Christ will become a warrior for Christ. Yeah. Uh, and so you can't this, control you, everything. Go ahead. You, yeah. You have to have like proper boundaries, but uh, it's very important. I think, you know, again, this is like, what are you trying to not create in your child? What are you trying to guide your child to? And, and the point is, and I was talking to a, a good friend of mine about this the other day. Um, the goal as a parent is to, uh, is to not replace you, but to make it so that they can be an adult who functions without you there because someday you won't be there. I think I've mentioned on here before, yeah. but that's like, I mean, if I, if I have to constantly be in my kid's life in order for them 
to function, then eventually I will, I will have failed them because no matter what, like you, you will, you will pass away. And with what I do, we see this often, you know, the terms helicopter parent, the snowplow parent, and that's the old adage of you're not trying to create the path for your child. You're trying to um, create your child for the path and probably creates not the right word. There's a better one. Prepare the path for your child. Yeah. You're supposed to prepare your child for the path because the truth is if you're going to be any good and strong in it, the path will not always in life be goodbye. The yellow brick road <laughs> ain't going to be perfect. It's the, not, you didn't want to hear me sing. No. I, I, well, you know, I, it's but great. It isn't I love gonna it. be a golden brick road, man. It's no. going to be, the, tumult, uh, the tumultuous and the uh, terrain which pushes boundaries. It's going to be off-roading sometimes. And I think coaching still has that idea of setting boundaries, right? You are the coach. You're the in, in charge of the team, what you say uh, goes, but you're, you're working with your players. You know, you can, you, obviously, I know <laughs> that this is something you're really familiar with. Um, but when you, when you look at coaching, uh, coach to confidant the difference is with coaching you're often you have the advice you have the answers and that's not hard for an 8 to 14 year old 15 year old and then you start getting past that age and if you've done your job well and you're moving more in that confidant range um and this will still happen at a younger age this is why i think you have confidant and coach mixed Kids will ask you things that you don't have the answer for. That's good. And the best thing that you can do is just be there and listen and give the best advice you can and the best help you can. But that life has lots of problems and lots of things that are hard and that don't necessarily have easy solutions. All right. So, um, you know, right away when you say that, one of the greatest privileges I have as a coach uh, and, and it's interesting because, you know, I'm, I'm breaking away from parenting now. I'm just talking about being a coach mm. is if I built a good enough relationship with my player, it became confidant is they would come talk to me about things that were really important, especially I can remember saying them talking to me about the next step in their relationship as they prepared to get married and how to, to handle the next steps and so forth. And to see that maturation and know that this was a clear confidence conversation is a big deal. And as a parent, that's what you want. You want your, your son or your daughter to come to you to discuss the next steps of their life. And as PJ just said, you don't always have the answers, mm. but even sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes I'm bouncing it off. They'll figure the answers out. They just need a sounding board and they need a place of confidence. So I want to finish with, because we talked about this, folks. Yeah. We talked about caretaker. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. And then coach confidant, and we, you know, yeah. I don't want to say we combine those, but they're similar and they can be uh, probably fluid at yeah. times. Well, and then I think confidant goes into the next one a little bit too, but it's something different. Right. So let me, let me just, uh, uh, and please keep it on the meal side. What did we do last night? Um, we went to uh, eat at a, a local restaurant that right. our friends uh, have been opening up. Right. So we go to there, right? We yep. go there. Eden Abbey. It's yeah, great. We're going to Eden Abbey and you invited some uh, of your friends. Yep. Okay. And there are friends too, but they are probably 35, 40, they're 40, maybe 45. I have no idea, <laughs> but I know we're not. Okay. So there's a, you, there's an age gap for you guys a little bit, but there's a bigger probably age gap for us, wherever that is. Yeah. But here's what I wanted to get. We went out to dinner with our, our, our son and his wife and their friends. So now we're not coaching you. And yes, I appreciate you saying the confidant. Well, there may be a, some confidant yeah. conversations. Your brother had a confidant conversation with us yeah. on the last couple of weeks. He's 24. But now we're companions. We're friends. Yeah. And that's what Paul, this is what made me think of Paul Witt wrote. I did a basketball camp and, and to see it with my son who's, you know, like I said, now 20. They're like friends now. Yeah. Now there's still, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I still am your dad. Yeah, right. And I don't know how that parallels out other than i'm way older okay well that's where i think the confidant thing uh still still, there. still yeah yeah right not lingers but it's, it's still a major part of it but yeah but here's the cool thing folks you can be friends with your child but i'm gonna say this probably not when they're four they don't need that they don't. that's not fair i i saw a really good and this is you know I, i'll blame it on being in digital marketing but 
I mean, it's it's just an easy way to blow off steam. I was watching TikTok, but great advice. A lot of people make the mistake, uh, a, a classic mis- mistake that people make is treating their kids like selfish adults. They don't have the skills and they don't have, they cannot be a peer to you. They can't, they can't be your friends. You can, you, they, what they need from you is to be a parent, right? You know, and that's like, and you, and unfortunately, and uh, there's, there's good ways to say this, but you can't say things like, well, have you thought about me? You know, and parents will say stuff like that, you know? And so Right, if like, I'm a kid, I would have said, what? Yeah, I, What's I, the I, answer? I, I, no. No, no. Well, I don't and think that, about you. I think about me. And I've said that to Finn before, but that's like, that is just to work his, you know, if, if you are constantly expecting this kind of equal relationship, it's not going to work. It's good to remind kids. It's like, hey, I have a life too. And that's a good thing, right? Right. Well, but there, there is that like, you, and I see people talk about being friends with their kids and I, it, it requires too much from them. Right. And, and here's what I want to say. So I, the last podcast, I said, my biggest problem in life is me, 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 me. When you, the more mature you get, the more recognized that is going on. Yeah. At, at six years old, that is really hard for them to comprehend that life is not about them. Yeah. Right. They don't understand that. And th- that's part of the parenting, the caretaking, then coaching. This is not about you. Yeah. And the biggest struggle we have in this country today is people are all about themselves, whether it be, and let's go, folks, you know, we want to talk all about the political realm and all that stuff. This is all selfishness that leads to greed. Mm. This is all selfishness that leads to my way or the highway. Mm. Okay. And if I disagree with you, you are dead wrong. Yeah. Or, or even just like, and I, I think the big part of this are people who are literally in, 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 in acting in bad faith. There are people who are acting in good faith on both sides, and there are people who are acting in bad faith who are happy to let there be division if they are reaping the benefits, That's which goes back really to the greed. Selfishness, greed, like, like this, and I think our country is in a mess because of this. This is not about parties. This is about reality of, in my opinion, yeah. we're going to go back to this. This is poor parenting, mm. where parents did not say to their kids, this is right, this is wrong. Hey, you can trust me. Let's have a conversation. This is, and, and I'm going to go jump here. This is why it's imperative in marriages that you don't put yourself first, that we don't have broken marriages. Mm. All of this is reaping an effect of broken marriages, which leads to broken parenting, yeah. which leads to broken children. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and I know that's a tangent, but I think we need to really analyze this. And, and before judging other people too, and everybody say, we're well, judging. No, no, I'm going to be responsible where I'm at. Yeah. It's a tremendous responsibility to parent and the, and you create cycles like there are, that's what generational sin is a real and powerful thing. Yeah. I mean, that's just, and you know what? Every privilege has its responsibilities and the greatest privilege I've ever had, the greatest two privileges are marriage and parenting, two greatest privileges mm-hmm. I've ever had. And that's why my mission is I will go to love God, the vertical that infects the horizontal, my marriage and my children. And that's the others. I, I had another quick thought, but I, I think it'd be wise for us to say that for another time. This has been uh, challenging to me. Um, I'm thankful that you're striving to be a caretaker, a coach, a confidant, and uh, someday praying that you'll be Finn's and even Soren's companion. It's going to happen. I know. Yeah. Just what that, again, too, we say that, but who we can't trust in ourselves. It still goes back to a previous podcast, it's still God's grace. Absolutely. Love you, buddy. Love you. Thanks.